All right, wonderful. Thank you all so much for joining me for a 60 minute yin yoga class. If we haven't met, my name is Holly. Today we are going to do a yin yoga class that I'm calling Hips Don't Lie after the uh, Shakira song. So we're gonna be working on our hips a lot. Yin yoga um, is mostly floor based. It's slow, it's gentle. We'll be holding postures for like three to five minutes. So whereas in more active styles of yoga, like vinyasa or 26 and two yoga, power yoga, you're you know moving around fast, you're contracting muscles to get into postures. In yin yoga, you're going really slow and you're relaxing muscles to get into postures. So just keep that in mind as we work through class. Sometimes it can feel like, oh, am I doing enough? But when you hold postures for three to five minutes, you really will end up feeling it. So um, make sure that you're listening to your body maybe doing just a little bit less than you think you need to. We're actually going to start, I know that I said yin yoga is um, <laughs> floor based, but we're actually going to start standing. Um, just really quick, we're going to do something here. So because we're focused on our hips, um, you know, eventually, right, the hips are square. So the hips are even with both feet pointing forward. So your hips are even. Um, some of us have hip issues because like, you know, one leg is a little longer than the other. Um, maybe, you know, we did ballet growing up. And so, you know, we have this external rotation of the hips, whatever it is. Um, could be an old sports injury or just how you walk, what side of your body you like carry your purse on. There's a million reasons why your hips might be a little bit out of balance. And there's a fun, um, easy way to kind of see if your hips are overly extating, externally rotating, overly internally rotating, whatever that is. Um, and it's just a little fun test that I like to do. So you're gonna close your eyes and you're gonna march in place for like 10 seconds, for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Okay, and then stop open your eyes and look down at your feet and notice, are they even? Is one foot pointing out or in? So for me, my right foot is pointing slightly out. And this makes a lot of sense because I know that I'm dealing with some right hip rotation pain right now. So if your foot, if your feet are even, it means your hips are pretty square. If one foot's like, you know, turning out or in, just keep that in mind. We're gonna do it two more times. Ready, close your eyes and march in place again. Okay, and then stop marching, stand still, open your eyes and look down. Now notice, is it the same foot that's rotating the same way? Um, is it a different foot? There's different things to check out here. So some of us, for me, my right foot is doing the exact same thing. Others of you, you might find it's a little bit different every time. We'll do it one, once more. Close your eyes and you can just march for 10 seconds. Try not to force your body just walking naturally and then stop marching, open your eyes and look down. And once again, my right foot is turning out. So if you had a different foot rotation every single time, that might indicate that there's a little bit of an imbalance in your hip, but that it's random, right? So it probably has to do with another joint, like a shoulder or a knee or an ankle. If you had the exact same foot turning in or out every single time, that is probably um, an indication, right, that there's some sort of imbalance going on in the hips, like with my right hip right now. So just keep that in mind as you practice. If you did notice a consistent imbalance where one foot was turning in or out, notice throughout class how that um, might feel when you're doing yoga postures. Okay, we're gonna come back to sitting. That's our only standing marching in place, I promise. So just keep that in mind. You're gonna start just by sitting in Sukhasana easy pose. So you bend your legs with one foot in front of the other, can have your hands in a, um, contemplative, we call it like a Buddha mudra. So right hand on top of left hand, thumbs touching. This is how you see Buddha sitting a lot of times. You can close your eyes. And we're just gonna do a little bit of a check-in right here. So we did that marching stuff. That was kind of like a diagnostic test, right? Not really yoga, but kind of helpful information for our hips yoga practice. Now we're starting to sink into a more intentional space so throughout class, throughout yoga, we're not just stretching the body in a calisthenic way, we're fostering the mind-body connection, right? We're being intentional with how we move, how we breathe, what stories we're telling ourselves. Take a slow inhale through your nose for four, 
three, two, one, and exhale through slowly through your mouth for six, five, four, three, two, one. Inhale through the nose for a count of four. Exhale through the mouth for a count of six. Inhale. And exhale. As you inhale, feel your chest rise, rib cage expand. <coughs> Excuse me. As you exhale, feel your shoulders fall and your ribs contract. Slow inhale for four, three, two, one. Slow exhale, six, five, four, three, two, one. Last time, inhale. Open your mouth and slowly exhale. Seal your lips and return your breath to normal. When you did that breathing exercise, did your mind wander off somewhere? It's really normal, mine does. It might be an indication that there's something still on your heart or your mind, maybe a task that you have to do after class or you know something that happened earlier today that rubbed you the wrong way or whatever that is. So let's just name and acknowledge whatever it is that's on your heart, that's on your mind, um, that does not have to, that doesn't pertain to, you know, the present moment, to your yoga practice. Just name it, acknowledge it. Right, it's not a bad thing to have, um, you know, obligations or worries or concerns. It means we're engaged. But just for this hour, you're going to politely set that stuff aside. So whatever, whatever it is that's on your heart, you're just going to Give yourself permission to let it go just for the next 55 minutes or so, right? Not forever, just for now, with the knowledge that when you come back, you'll have renewed energy and vision. Wonderful. When you're ready, slowly open your eyes. And we're going to come into a child's pose to begin. So we're going to do lots of hip rotation postures. So our first child's pose, we're going to have the knees and feet together so that the hips stay relatively square, right? We'll have plenty of opportunities to open the hips, close the hips. For today, you're just gonna sit knees, feet together, hips square, put your hands on the floor and slowly walk yourself forward. Reach your arms forward, maybe forehead rests on the floor, sink your hips down. Now at first hips might be way off the heels, right? That's really normal. We're just gonna use gravity rather than force. This is a great way to slowly wake up the hips, the toes, the ankles, knees, and to stretch the spine. There's many variations we can take. If having your arms forward is uncomfortable for your shoulders, you're welcome to have your arms down by your side. If you have sensitive toes or ankles, you can roll up your mat or place a small blanket underneath your toes, ankles, or knees so there's extra padding there. You can also use a blanket um, on your under your chest if you want. You can roll it up so there's more padding on your chest or your arms. Or of course, you can put the blanket under your head. So we have this blanket here as a prop throughout class just for a little extra cushion under any tight joints. Okay, we're gonna hold here for one minute. Again, you're just waking up the hips, waking up the spine. Reach your arms forward, sink your hips down, and breathe. You can use what's called a new jai breath. You're going to gently constrict your throat just a little bit so that you breathe a little slower. This will help to warm up the body from the inside out. And it's a cool sound. It's a little bit of a snoring sound or like the sound if you put your ear to a shell at the beach. So if you want, you can close your eyes, do these slow breaths, and even imagine that you're in child's pose at the beach, right? Your breath sounds a little bit like waves in the ocean.
Let's take three more slow Ujjayi breaths in our child's pose. you're ready, put your hands on the floor, slowly, carefully walk yourself up, take your time. Then you're gonna turn around and lie on your back for our first puddle pose. And open your arms and legs as, as wide as feels right for you. If lying on your back with your legs straight bothers your lower back, that's really normal. There's a couple options. You can place a little bit of a rolled up blanket under your lower back for support there, or you can bend your legs so that your feet are on the floor and your knees rest side by side. Just taking some pressure off of the lumbar spine. So in yin yoga, we call this posture puddle pose and other styles of yoga, it's sometimes referred to as savasana or corpse pose or dead body pose. Um, and you know, in some styles of yoga, like 26 and two, Savasana is very um, specific, right? It's like heels together, toes fall open, arms down by your sides, palms face the ceiling, eyes open, mouth closed, breathing normal. If you practice 26 and two yoga with me, you've probably heard me say that many times. Puddle pose and yin in general is a little bit more freestyle, right? So whereas some styles of yoga are very um, exacting and I, I love that, Yin is meant to be a little bit more of like a you do you style of yoga. So just keep that in mind. The shape that I make with my body might not be the same shape that works for you. I will uh, try to provide many modifications or alternative postures, different options, different depths throughout this class. But just as a reminder, you are always your greatest teacher. I know a decent amount about yoga and anatomy, but you know your life story better than anyone, right? So if at any time in class, something I'm saying does not work for your body, your mind, your spirit, um, listen to yourself, right? You're always your greatest teacher. I'm just here to offer some suggestions. Okay, from here, you're gonna bend your legs so your feet are on the floor. Knees resting together if they're not already. Take your time rolling off to one side. Put your hands on the floor, slowly push yourself up. There's no rush. We're gonna come back to a seated position for um, butterfly pose, right? So from here, you're gonna bring knees and feet together. If you'd like, put your hands on the floor behind you for a moment. You can just windshield wiper your knees, your hips, right and left. And then from here, feet on the floor, you're going to slowly start to open your knees so that the soles of your feet touch. To get more of a hip opener, you can bring your heels closer to your groin. If it's too intense, bring your feet further away from your body. Eventually, the knees will drop, but at first, knees are pretty high, right? And that's okay. You're just going to use gravity to slowly let the knees drop. We're going to hold here for um, four minutes. I'm going to set an alarm now. If you ever see me looking at my phone, I am not ignoring you. I am just setting an alarm. Okay. So once you've found your lower body shape, I'm going to give you a couple options for the upper body. Um, and I'm going to show you from the side. For the spine, two options. If you have a history of slip discs or lower back pain, you can stay upright or you can fold forward with a flat back. So you're going to stick your butt out a little bit and put your hands on the floor. Um, if it feels good, you can round your spine and let your head drop. But again, if you have a history of back pain, especially lower back pain, letting the spine round can be a little bit intense. If you're rounding your spine and you feel like, you know what, this doesn't feel good for my back, come on up, either sitting up upright or with a flat back folding forward. Also gonna give you some different variations for a nice wrist stretch here. You're welcome to flip your palms so that fingers point towards you, wrists point away from you, and that's a nice wrist stretch. Or you can flip your hands so that knuckles are on the floor, palms face the ceiling, and that's a nice wrist stretch. So 
So there's three rules to yin yoga. It's pretty simple. First rule, make a shape with your body. Second rule, hold the shape. Third rule, breathe. That's it. Make a shape, hold a shape, breathe. Um, because we are holding these postures for a long period of time, you want to do about 70% of what you think you should be doing. If you're holding a posture for 30 seconds to a minute, right, I might say like go to your deepest point right away. But with yin, again, we're not forcing our body, we're just using gravity and our breath to slowly allow the body to open. If what you're doing already, like my wrists are like, ooh, this isn't comfortable. If what you're doing already is not working for you, you're welcome to switch it up, you know, maybe coming up more, rounding your spine, coming up off of the wrists, whatever that is. Um, when we hold postures for long periods of time, it can get uncomfortable. It can get uncomfortable physically as far as your body opening up, and it can also get uncomfortable on a um, psychological, emotional, or spiritual level, right? A lot of us um, do not sit still very much, or if we do sit still, it's at like a desk at work and we're not being really like conscious of what we're doing. So sometimes just sitting with yourself, holding still, breathing, that can be kind of intense, right? Like um, as far as the inside and as far as what's going on the outside with your bones, your joints, your muscles, your tendons, your ligaments, that can be kind of intense too. If you need to switch up what you're doing to get out of um, like pain, please feel free, right? You can always ease up what you're doing or switch up what you're doing, but notice the difference between moving around because what you're doing is, is not working, it's painful, you can't breathe, versus moving around because you would rather do anything but sit still, right? A big flag for me is if I notice all of a sudden I have to scratch, like I'm itchy on 10 different plates and places on my body, that's usually like my psyche, right? Trying to get me out of, out of the stillness to distract me from that stillness. So just keep that in mind. Take a slow inhale through your nose. Slow exhale through your nose. We're here for about 15 more seconds. This is a time if you'd like to go a little deeper and fold forward or whatever that is for you, this is your time right here. You can always go a little deeper at the end. And as you're ready, slowly walk yourself back up to an upright position. Two ways to get out of it. You can just bring your legs forward or you can put your hands on your knees, thighs whew, and help your knees back together. If you'd like, you can put your hands behind you. Maybe do a counter stretch with your wrists and then just windshield wiper out the legs or straighten your legs and do a little bit of this. When we hold postures for long periods of time afterwards, I'll always invite you to do whatever sort of counter stretch feels good for you. And then we're going to turn back around and lie down again in puddle pose. So sometimes it can feel a little bit repetitive, you know, to lie down in between every single posture. But it's really good for resetting the body, right? So in that posture, we opened the hips, we externally rotated the hips for a long period of time for four minutes. So now we're just lying in a more neutral position, allowing the whole body to stretch out. Okay, from here, you're gonna bend your legs again, feet on the floor, roll off to one side, maybe the side that you haven't rolled off to yet. And then push yourself up, take your time. Slowly come back into a seated position. Great, and from here, we're gonna come on to tabletop. Put your hands on the floor in front of you, open your knees, open your feet. We're gonna do um, what in uh, in yin yoga, we call hero pose. In 26 and 2 yoga, it's a version of uh, fixed firm. So you're going to open your knees and your feet, point your toes back so that the insides of your feet are parallel. And from here, you're going to slowly walk your hands back and slowly sink your hips down. You are welcome to put a blanket or a pillow underneath your butt, under your toes, your ankles, your knees, 
eventually you'll be able to sit down in between your heels. Doesn't have to be today or tomorrow. Know that opening your knees wider might help you sit down. So this is an internal rotation to the hips. It's also really good for toes, ankles, knees. Any of my friends who like run or bike or ski or play basketball or soccer, all of those things that use the lower body joints, you might find that you're pretty high up in this posture, right? You might want a couple of blankets or pillows under your butt, um, but this is your posture. Anyone who loves running or any sports activities that involve running, this is your posture. We don't always go super deep into it, but it's really good for opening up the tight joints in the lower body. We're gonna hold here for four minutes. We're already one minute in. Okay. So again, in 26 and two yoga, if you practice that with me, um, we hold this posture for like 30 seconds top, like maybe a minute in a 90 minute class and a 60 minute class, it might be like, <laughs> <laughs> go back and then come back out, right? So in that way, it works into joints and it works into the thigh muscles. Um, in this style of yoga, we're working not just into muscles, not just into joints, we're working into connective tissue, into fascia, into tendons, ligaments. We hold postures for long periods of time and the body starts to mold into those shapes. Again, we don't just stretch muscle, we really start to stretch and open tissue as well, which is really great, but just keep that in mind. Again, sometimes we're like, I don't feel like much is happening, right? That's okay. So you have an option to stay here or you can take this into a twist. If you'd like to do a spine twist midweek, you'll place your right hand on the floor behind you. Inhale, reach your left arm up, feel a nice stretch on the left side body. Exhale, place left hand on right knee. Inhale, stretch up. Exhale, look over right shoulder and twist. So this is a nice way to get a spine twist while we're um, in the posture. We're gonna hold here for a minute and then I'll give us the option to do the other side. The spine moves in six different directions, right, left, backward, forward, twisting to each side. Even though this is a hip oriented, hip focused class, we will move the spine in all of those different directions. So just keep that in mind. All right, as you're ready, if you're in the twist, slowly unwind, and we're gonna do the other side. Place your left hand close behind you. Inhale, reach right arm up, stretch up. Exhale, place right hand on left knee. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, pull your abdomen slightly, look over your left shoulder and twist. You might notice that this side feels a little or a lot different. We're not symmetrical. Yoga is really good for addressing, you know, asymmetries or tightness in the body. But yoga is actually like a really powerful tool simply for gaining information about your body. So, you know, often when we have a hip imbalance, again, it's like related to another part of the body, like the shoulders or the knee or the ankle or whatever that is. So just keep that in mind. You might be able to connect the dots here with like, wow, twisting to the left is um, a lot harder than twisting to the right. And also interesting, um, you know, my right hip was the one that kept internally rotating in that little marching exercise we did at the beginning of class. You can start to kind of connect the dots between how different parts of your body are interacting. Good, as you're ready, slowly, carefully unwind. Put your hands on the floor in front of you. Take your time, walk yourself back up. Any sort of counter stretch you wanna do, go for it. I like to straighten one leg, tuck my toes under, stretch. This is just what I like to do. What you can do is totally different. Just anything that would feel good to your body after holding that internally rotated hip position. And then we're gonna turn back this time onto our abdomen. Sorry, my bad. You're gonna lie on your abdomen for belly savasana or belly puddle pose. So a um, couple of options when you lie on your stomach, you can bend your elbows out and have your hands in and just relax your head. You can also look to the right with your left ear on your mat you're welcome to either keep your elbows bent with your hands close to your face or have your arms down by your side. 
Belly Savasana is a really nice option to breathe into the body. So if you're looking right and left, it's a great way to twist the neck and shoulder, but it can be a little intense, especially if you're having stomach pain, um, if you're pregnant or recently gave birth, if you're breastfeeding. So if lying on your stomach does not feel good for you, you are always welcome to take pedal pose on your back or on your side. And by the same token, if lying on your back doesn't feel good for you, you can always take pedal pose on your abdomen. If you're looking to the right with your left ear on your mat, gently lift your head and look to the other side, right ear on your mat. Send deep belly breaths in and out through your nose to massage the front of your body. Breathe deep into any point of tension. Let the floor hold you up. Okay, as you're ready, gently lift your head, look forward again, put your hands on the floor and push yourself up. We're going to do what's called um, dragon's pose. It's like a low lunge, like a runner's lunge. So from tabletop position, you're going to pick a foot. I'm going to choose my right foot, put your right foot in front. So foot between the hands. From here, you're going to slowly lengthen that left leg back. Now, in a lot of styles of yoga, you would want your knee directly over your ankle. For this one, you can let the knee go beyond the ankle towards the toes. Couple options here. You can sit up right and get a nice back bend. You can even put your hands on your hips or behind you and open up through the chest. You can also come down and eventually in dragon pose, you can even let your knee open to one side and come down onto your forearms. We're gonna hold here for four minutes. Um, for those of you that have ever held this posture for a while, you know that it can be kind of intense. So just keep that in mind. Um, I'll tell you when we're halfway through and if you need to switch up what you're doing, feel free. So this back leg is stretching with a square hip, right? You wanna move the left hip forward a little bit. So the back leg, back hip is stretching out. And then the right leg, if you wanna open it out to the right is a nice external rotation to right hip. So again, it's a great way to get a neutral stretch to that back lengthened leg. Notice where you might be holding tension in your body. See if you can let it go through the exhale breath. Think about melting into the posture, relaxing into the posture rather than forcing your way. Too much is too much, too little is too little. You wanna figure out the sweet spot and every day is different, every body is different. What works for me might not work for you. You're always welcome to place a blanket, you know, under your hip, under your knee, under your ankle, even use it to fold forward, whatever works for you. We're about halfway through. If what you're doing does not feel tenable for another two minutes, please feel free, you know, to come up, to ease up, or just to take another variation halfway through, right? Maybe opening the knee, maybe bringing it back, maybe sitting up, or of course, rolling up your mat, rolling up a towel under your knee, under your ankle, whatever it is that's bothering you. Again, the main goal here is just to get this stretch to the back thigh. I think there's almost 60 muscles that connect um, the hip to the pelvis and the leg. So there's a lot of muscles in this area that are connecting um, the hip joint to the pelvis and leg bones, right? So just keep that in mind, lots to stretch out, lots to breathe into, but we're never forcing the body.
30 seconds left. Everybody's doing great. Notice where your mind is going, especially if you're a little or a lot uncomfortable. Are you focusing on that discomfort, right? And is that useful? I just breathe into the body, breathe into the hip. Okay, as you're ready, you're gonna put your hands on the floor if they're not already, slowly whew, walk yourself up. If you'd like, you can take a counter stretch by sinking back on the heel, stretching forward. And then as you're ready, you're gonna slowly come back up and lie on your abdomen or your back, up to you for another belly pose savasana. Sometimes the release from the posture can be as intense as the posture itself. It can be intense in a physical way, but it can also bring up sometimes some emotions. Um, our hips hold a lot of tension, a lot of emotion. You know, when we get stressed out, we hunch forward, right? We tuck the tailbone under, we try to protect the front of our body. It's a biological response to stress. And sometimes that means that the hips get, you know, um, a little tight for not just physical reasons like running or soccer, but for emotional reasons, right? Like again, if, some, if your boss yells at you, you hunch forward, you sag a little bit, can start to tense up the hips as well as the neck and the shoulders. So just keep that in mind when you release out of postures, when you're in hip openers, if an emotion comes up, it's just kind of like releasing something from the body. If you're on your abdomen looking to one side, gently lift your head and look to the other side, stretching the other neck. As you're ready, lift your head, look forward, put your hands on the floor, push yourself up. Let's do the other side. So other leg in front, foot between the hands. As you're ready, you're going to slowly lengthen that back leg. This side might feel very different. Again, we're not symmetrical. Notice how that um, might relate to that marching exercise that we did before class, right? Right. If, um, if this hip is the one that you notice that foot was turning in or out on you might notice that this hip feels a little different. Ideally, you would do the same, you know, style folding or leaning back as you did on the other side for the sake of symmetry. But if you can't do exactly what you did on the other side, that is really normal. So just keep that in mind. Again, if you need to um, place a blanket or roll up your mat a little bit under a knee, under an ankle, please feel free. We're going to hold here for four minutes. to keep your shoulders away from your ears. Relax your forehead. Relax your jaw. Sometimes when one part of our body feels something really intensely, other parts of the body tense up, right? So maybe if like the hip is really stretching here, then like the shoulders want to tense. Try to relax all the parts of your body that you can. Again, we're relaxing into postures rather than forcing or fighting. Um, one of the psychological benefits of yin, especially for those of us that are like go-getters, want to do everything 110% all of the time, yin is an invitation to get out of that and be okay with doing a little less. Again, you want to do about 70% of what you think you should be doing. So especially if you tend to be hard on yourself, which I'm guessing a lot of us do, um, this is an opportunity to be gentle with yourself, to be kind with yourself. This is not, you know, the time to force or to push yourself. This is the time to relax into your body and to stretch. That's all. We're over halfway through. If you'd like, you can stay just as you are or maybe switch up a little bit what you're doing. Again, shoulders away from the ears, just stretching that hip. This is called dragon pose. Any discomfort you're feeling, think about 
breathing it out like a dragon, breathing out fire, just breathing out anything that doesn't quite feel right. about 30 seconds left. Just know that the end is near. This is always an opportunity to go a little deeper or stay just as you are. Good for you. Take a slow inhale through your nose. Slow exhale through your nose. Put your hands on the floor, slowly, whew, carefully come back out. If you'd like to take that counter stretch, maybe sinking back onto the heel, stretching forward. And then take your time, slowly push yourself up. I'm gonna turn around, you can lie on your abdomen. I'm gonna lie on my back, huddle pose. Whew, that is not an easy posture. Open your arms and legs as much as you'd like and take a few slow breaths here. About letting your whole spine lengthen and realign to the floor and let the floor hold you up. Sometimes when we come out of these postures, um, <laughs> I've heard it described as like Wow, I have appreciation for like grandparents, right? And how it must feel to walk around when like you're elderly and your joints are really sore all the time. When you come out of the postures, if you feel like creaky or achy um, or almost like arthritic, uh, you didn't do it wrong, right? It's, it's simply that you were holding a shape of your body for a long period of time. You were breathing into that part of your body, right? You weren't just stretching the muscles. You weren't just opening the joints. You were working into connective tissue. So when you come out of that posture and realign the body, it can feel a little or a lot intense. So if you feel sore when you're coming out of a posture, that doesn't necessarily mean that you did it wrong. Now I will say, you know, if you notice after Yin, like the next day, every single time you're in pain and like not in a good way, not in like a, I stretched or I worked that way, right? That's a sign that you might've gone too far. Um, but right when you come out of the posture, if you feel a little or a lot achy, uh, that's, not, that's not a bad thing. It's just the body kind of resetting after that long held motion. Okay, from here, you're gonna bend your legs up so your feet are on the floor. We're gonna go into a uh, supine pigeon pose or what we'd call us uh, lying on our back figure four. So feet are on the floor, knees resting together. Take your time if you aren't on your back, just slowly rolling over onto your back. From here, keep your left foot on the floor and lift your right leg up. So your right ankle shin area is on top of your left thigh. So if you were to look down the center line of your body, your legs are making um, a four shape, right? That's why it's called figure four. Option to stay here or start to lift your left foot off the floor and draw your thighs in towards your abdomen. You can keep your hands on the floor. You can also grab outer thighs. Um, you can bring your right hand in between your legs, interlace your fingers behind your left thigh, any sort of variation with the hands that works for you. And we're just gonna hold still here for three minutes. So you're gonna feel this on the outer right thigh. Um, this is a great hip joint opener, outer thigh stretch. And it's also a really good posture if you have um, active sciatica, sciatic nerve pain, that nerve that runs from the lower back down to the foot. Um, if you have sciatica or if you know someone that has sciatica, this is your posture. If you've ever experienced frozen hip where your hip joint locks, this is your posture. Um, and there's variations of it, right? Like pigeon pose where you're upright, but the one we're doing today, it's on your back. 
especially after that lunge we did where sometimes the shoulders can get a little achy into the ears. Here, we're just lengthening the whole spine. And again, we're not just opening the hip joint, we're really working into the outer right thigh. One thing to keep in mind, um, you know, if you have like hamstring tightness or lower back tightness, sometimes we think that the anecdote to that is to stretch the hamstrings, right? Or to stretch out the lower back, right? That makes a lot of sense. But actually a lot of times our hamstring or lower back discomfort is directly um, related to hip or pelvis misalignment. So if you got an achy hamstring and you're doing all of the stretches, you're icing, you're heating, you're taking, you're taking Advil, you know what I mean? All that stuff. And your hamstring is still bothering you. Do some hip openers as well, right? Like what we're doing here today. These postures aren't just good for the hips and the pelvis. They're really good um, for, you know, stretching out the back, for working into the upper legs. So just keep that in mind. You know, sometimes where we feel pain, we think that that is the source of the pain. And in reality, the pain is coming from something else. And of course, this is, has, you know, non-yogic applications as well, right? Like somebody says something mean to you and you're like, or somebody says something and it hurts you. And so you're mad at them, but really maybe they just like triggered something in you, you know, that doesn't actually have to do with what they said, right? We think the source of the pain, like that person or the hamstring or the back is the culprit and sometimes it's actually something a little bit deeper. So just keep that in mind in yoga and in life as well. We've got about 30 seconds left here. You're welcome to stay just as you are or to draw your thighs in a little bit closer to your abdomen, deepening the stretch. You're ready. If you have, you know, grip on your legs or your knees in any way, release that grip. Take your time, slowly return your left foot down to the floor, right foot down to the floor. You can kind of windshield wiper out your legs or draw your knees in or anything that feels good to you right now. And then go back into your puddle pose shape, making the puddle shape of your choice. Just notice what happens to the body and maybe to the spirit as well as you release out of the posture. Just noticing, noticing any shifts in the body, maybe even shifts in consciousness or lack thereof, right? Sometimes postures like really affect one person and not the other. Sometimes a posture can be like a walk in the park every day and then one day out of the blue, it just like smacks you in the face. So just keep that in mind that whatever your experience is, it's valid, whether it's a deep sensation or no sensation at all. Just be curious, right? Because there's, there's a reason behind that. So just something to dig into. Let's do the other side. Bend your legs up, feet on the floor, knees resting side by side. Take a moment here. Keep your right foot on the floor this time. Lift your left foot off the floor. Bring your left knee to the left. Place your left ankle shin area on top of your right upper thigh. So if you look down, your legs make a four shape. And then from here, lift your right foot off the floor if it feels right. Hug your thighs in towards your chest. Again, you can take any variation with the hands, either leaving them down on the floor or maybe grabbing your knees, your thighs, interlacing your fingers behind your right thigh. We're going to hold here for three minutes. Notice if you're kind of rolling off to one side in the back. Try to relax both shoulders, both hips to the floor. Keep your head on the floor. If you think about lengthening the neck, so kind of stretching the top of your head slightly towards the top of your mat, maybe chin just a little bit into the chest so the neck gets a little longer, right? The upper, middle, and lower spine. Everything's kind of lengthening and realigning to the floor as you stretch the outer left thigh and left sciatic nerve.
Notice where your mind goes in moments of silence. Make sure that the stories that you're telling yourself are kind and true, being kind to yourself, loving to yourself. We're learning a little bit of Jedi mind tricks here, learning how to control the mind through the breath, through the mind-body connection, rather than having the mind control us. Just being compassionate with yourself, compassionate in your own body, your own experience in yoga. About 30 seconds left here. You can stay just as you are or hug your thighs in a little closer to your abdomen, deepening the outside thigh, left hip stretch. Take a slow inhale through your nose. Slow exhale through your nose. Release the grip on your knees or your thighs. Slowly return your right foot to the floor, left foot to the floor. You can do any little counter stretches that feel good to you. And then return to your pedal pose shape. Okay, bend your legs up, maybe give yourself a hug here. Roll off to one side. Put your hands on the floor, press yourself up. And come towards the top of your mat. We've got 10 minutes left in class. The last few postures that we hold, we're gonna hold for around two minutes rather than three, four, five minutes. So just keep that in mind. Place your hands on the floor behind you. Bring your feet to the floor, knees bent. You can windshield wiper out your legs a couple times. And then from here, when you get to the right side, you're going to roll right knee down towards the floor. You're going to sit in a little bit of what I'll call a cheerleader position. You're going to try and place your left knee on the floor. Uh, your hip might lift off the floor. Mine does, right? But it's this, if you've ever seen like a cheerleader pose in a high school yearbook, right? That's kind of what we're going for. This is an internal rotation to that hip, right? External rotation, internal rotation. Option to stay right here. Eventually this goes into what's called um, deer pose, where you're gonna try and have your two legs make 90 degree angles. So right knee in line with right hip, right knee in line with right ankle, left knee in line with left hip, left foot in line with left ankle. So the legs make two L's. Hip might be off the floor minus, you're welcome to place a blanket um, under a butt cheek, under a knee, under ankles, right? If the knee's way off the floor, you can put something under the knee if, it's, if you're experiencing discomfort. And then from here, if you'd like a little bit of a back bend, whew, you can lie back a little bit. If you'd like a little bit of a forward curl, you can lie forward or a spine twist. You can place left hand on right knee and look to the right and twist. We're gonna hold here for two minutes, We're already one minute in. Keep your shoulders away from your ears, wherever you are. Again, this is a great internal rotation to the hip. A lot of yin postures are about external rotation to the hips. This is a really good option for that internal rotation.
Take a slow inhale through your nose. And with the exhale breath, just allow yourself to melt into the posture just a little bit more. Good, as you're ready, slowly bring your upper body back into a neutral position. Take your time, slowly slide that left foot forward, right foot forward, you can do a couple more windshield wiper action, good. And in between, before we do the other side, we're gonna come into what's called um, a yogi squat. It is also called garland pose or malasana. Put your feet on the floor, hands on the floor. If you have, um, uh, what should I say? If you have low blood pressure, if standing up makes you dizzy, um, keep that in mind. We're gonna slowly stand up, take your time, go slow, especially if you tend to get dizzy when you stand up. From here, you're gonna open your feet two to three feet. Now, depending on how wide your hips are, you might want a bigger or smaller step. Turn your toes out and your heels in. Put your hands on the floor, bend your knees, and slowly start to sit down. Eventually, you'll, your heels will be on the floor. This might not be happening today. You might be way forward, right? If your heels are super far off the floor, two options. You can just have your hands on the floor in front of you and let the heels lift, or you can place a blanket or a pillow underneath your heels so that there's some stability there. Eventually heels to the floor, getting your heels closer to the floor might be as simple as taking a wider or smaller step. Okay, if you can bring heels to floor, place your hands at heart center, start to push the elbows out and lift the chest up. So this is how a lot of the world eats hangs out by the side of the road. This is how a lot of the world like uses the bathroom, right? It's squatting position. It's really good for hips, for digestion. If you ever have menstrual cramps, this is a great posture to do. But in America, I think it's something like 70% of Americans can't, can't do this, right? So, you, so if your heels are not on the floor, that's normal. This is a great option, something you can do like outside of a yoga practice. I have a friend who sits this way, um, squats this way when they're like waiting for the subway in New York. I have a friend that does this every day, like when they're watching television, they'll sit like this for five minutes. It's, it's a simple thing that you don't have to think too much about, but slowly over time, as the hips open up, the heels come down to the floor. Let's take three more breaths here. Okay. Good. From here, I'm going to put my hands on the floor behind me and just find your way onto your butt. You can bring your arms forward, maybe shake out the legs, windshield wiper the legs. Then we're going to do the other side of that cheerleader pose. Hands close behind you, bend your feet up. So feet are on the floor. And this time you're going to move knees to the left. Assume your cheerleader shape, okay? Um, again, eventually you'll do what's called deer pose where the knees, ankles, and hips are in line. So left knee in line with left hip, left ankle in line with left knee, right knee in line with right hip, right ankle in line with right knee. Might not happen today. You're welcome to place a blanket under your glutes, under your knees. You can do a back bend, forward hold, or a spine twist, dealer's choice holding here for two minutes. And again, just noticing how this side might feel a little or a lot different and how that might relate to what you've noticed in other posture, what's going on with your hips or your knees or your ankles. Or again, it could be like a shoulder imbalance. Um, I always carry my purse on my right shoulder and not only does that like stupidly affect my shoulder, but I'm pretty sure that is part of the culprit of why my right hip is like overly rotated compared to my left. So, and yet I still do it, right? I mean, <laughs> that's kind of the sad part. Let's do three more breaths here, just relaxing into the posture rather than forcing it. Okay, 
make your way into a more upright position with the upper body and then take your time slowly slide that leg forward turn around puddle pose Whew. so we did a little combo there right where we did the internal rotation to the hip with the cheerleader or deer pose and then we did that external rotation in between with the squatting pose the garland pose now we're just returning into a more neutral position. Last posture of the day. For the sake of time, we'll keep it pretty short. We're going to do a spine twist. Bend your legs so your feet are on the floor. Knees rest side by side. Bring your arms out to the side. You can also bend your arms, cactus, like goalposts. Start to roll to your right side so that the left hip stacks on top of right hip. Left knee on top of right knee left foot on top of right foot, try to keep the left shoulder on the floor. This is a neutral hip position. The hip joints are in place, stacking on one another, but you're not, you know, opening or closing or rotating them in any way. It's a neutral hip position, spine twist, after all of that rotation that we've done in the hips. Option to keep your head resting on the floor or roll your left ear down towards the floor for a little bit of a neck twist as well. So, I'll, I try to end classes with spine twists um, because it's a motion that we don't regularly do with our body, like, you know, outside of yoga, right? We usually hunch forward a lot during the day. Uh, maybe you do a couple back bends to relieve back pressure, but spine twisting is like a really great way to relieve pressure from your back. So, you know, especially if you work at a desk all day and you're kind of hunching forward, make sure that periodically you're standing up and doing your back bends but also make sure that periodically you're doing some spine twists in the middle of your day as well. If you're looking to the left, gently roll your head back to center and then slowly release, coming to the other side, roll to your left. So right hip stacks on top of left hip, right knee on top of left knee, right foot on top of left foot. Try to keep right shoulder on the floor. Option to have your head on the floor or roll your right ear down towards the floor, looking over the right side body for a neck twist. When we twist the spine like this, it's also good for digestion. If you ever have an upset stomach, um, spine twists are a really good way to relieve like gas bubbles from the stomach. So just keep that in mind as well. Okay, if you're looking to your right, gently roll your head back to center. Slowly return your right hip down to the floor arms and legs down. This is our final puddle pose, final savasana. Close your eyes. If they're not already, open your arms and legs. If you'd like, you can, you know, place the blanket like over you and just take a nap or an extra long savasana. You can place a blanket under your head, under your lower back, or just be exactly as you are. But, you know, if you have time to make this a luxurious into the class, be bougie, go for it, do what you want to do. Put some cucumbers over your eyes, right? Like whatever it is, let this be part of your self-care routine. Take a slow inhale through your nose. And a slow exhale through your nose. And just checking in with any shifts. Sometimes when we release out of the posture, we feel it right away, but sometimes not till later this evening. So for the rest of your night, make sure that you're drinking lots of water, listening to your body. Um, and again, if you ever have like back pain or hamstring pain that is not being cured by stretching your legs or your lower back, check in with the hips as well, right? All the different parts of the body relate to each other. They work with one another. So our goal from yoga is to have different parts of the body help each other rather than hinder each other, right? One more time, slow inhale through your nose. Anything you wanna let go of, open your mouth and just exhale it through the mouth. Two more times, breathe in through the nose for four, three, two, one. Exhale through your mouth, six, five, four, three, two, one last time, inhale slow through the nose. And exhale a little slower through the mouth. 
Seal your lips. Return your breath to normal. Picture your body, your heart, your spirit in perfect, radiant health.